this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bellos Designs. Here is a fun video tutorial for a cat in a window featuring Lavinia's Mooch, the cat, and Sweet Poppy Brick Stencil. This is a fun card to do and is easy because the window is actually layered on top of the bricks. So let's go over the supplies that we're going to use today. We will be using the Lavinia Multifarious Smooth and Supreme. So I have cut a piece that is six and three quarters by four and three quarter inches for our um, base card that's going to have our brick stenciling on it. And then for our window, we're actually going to stencil on a separate little scrap piece of card stock uh, that we will then cut out and layer on top. For the frame, we have just used a piece of cardstock. I've cut this to be five inches by seven inches. And then for the card base, I just took a piece of cardstock and cut it down to be uh, ten and a half inches by seven and one quarter inches. And then I have folded that in half. For our um, brick, we are going to be using the Sweet Poppy brick wall back plate. This one is SP6-131. We'll also go ahead and use um, a Lavinia stamp today. This stamp is going to be Mooch. He's one of my favorites. Um, I enjoy using him a lot. So he's going to be our cat that's going to be in the window. This one is LAV404. We'll use the sentiment stamp. Um, you can choose anything that you like. I just wanted to do something that was very basic and simple so that it didn't um, uh, detract from the overall photo by being a great big huge one. But you can do whatever sentiment that you would like to do. One of the things that I like to use, um, it is optional, but it really does help a lot. When you're doing your um, stenciling, this is a uh, metal stencil. So I like to go ahead and use a um, magnetic uh, back plate. This will help to keep your artwork and your stencil from wiggling around too much. For our colors today, um, for our base ink, that's the black, I'm just going to be using the Versifying Claire Nocturne. And then for our um, other colors, I'm going to be using Distress Inks. We will be using Pumice Stone, Black Soot, Fired Brick, Crackling Campfire, Tea Dye, Wild Honey, and Vintage Photo. I will be using blending tools as well as some small daubers on our project today. I also like to use a stamping platform. So I have my stamping platform here and then as you can probably see, I have got a sticky grid. Uh, the reason I like to use the sticky grid is that I don't have to use magnets. I'll also be using a um, black fine tipped pen. This will help us to create our wood look on our uh, window frame. And uh, then I will go ahead and show you some uh, a few basic things. One is that um, you have an alternate that you can do to stenciling your background um, uh, on your window frame. This is actually a piece of the um, Craft Consortium paper. It is a uh, called Brick Textures and um, it's got all kinds of different brick textures. This is the one that I used on that particular card. But if you prefer to do that, basically what I did with this card is take my brick textures and then just cut around my uh, piece of cardstock to get this particular look. I'm going to be using a um, stencil that I made myself. This one you cannot see because it's so because it's so clear, but. I'm going to be using the stencil that I made because I want a smaller window. There is a good alternative for that. Um, it is the Magimask 
There is a window stencil that has all the little pieces for uh, creating your window look. Um, I'll pull this out and we'll look at this a little bit later on. This is a little bit bigger than what I like to use. So if you decide that you want to do this, you could use um, a larger card base so that you have a lot of your brick showing or you could always turn it to be landscape. That way you get a lot more of the window showing. All right, so let's go ahead and get started working on our project. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is go ahead and make our background for with our bricks on it. So we're going to take our larger piece of cardstock. This is the one that's cut uh, four and three quarter inches by six and three quarter inches. And we're going to start out by just putting down a very, very light background just so that we don't have the stark white. I'm not going to go across the entire um, card. I'm just going to kind of do it in the center. I'm going to start out with the pumice stone. You may not be able to see this very well on the video um, because it is light, but this is just basically for the color that's kind of in between the bricks because I don't, I don't want that to be a bright white between the bricks. So all I'm going to do is just take this color and just randomly put some down in the background. As we go along, we can always add a little bit more after we get our bricks on there if we feel like we need a little bit more color between the bricks. But this is a good base start. And I'm basically just kind of going around in the center part and a little bit to the edge, but I'm not going completely over the edge. Again, this is really hard to see because it's such a pale color, but it will dull some of that bright white. All right, I don't think you'll be able to see it very well. But we've just got a very light base down now. You can use any color that you like. I just like to start with a very pale one. If you want it to show up darker to start out with, you're welcome to do that. But um, I think this is the way that I like to start it out, just, just to, to give that um, softening look. So now we're going to do our bricks. I'm going to take my metal, uh, my magnet, since our stencil is me um, metal, made of metal, I'm going to lay my card down on it first. And then I'm going to take my brick stencil and just lay that down on top. And because it's on top of the, the magnet sheet, it shouldn't wiggle around. Now, if you like to, um, I, I sometimes worry that I'm not going to... Um, be able to keep it from wiggling around too much but um, so you can do it either way I like to go ahead and take either a little piece of the sweet um, poppy low tack tape or some of the of painters tape and just kind of lay it across the top and down here at the bottom a little bit that just keeps it gives it just a slight little bit more stability keeping make making sure that your stencil doesn't wiggle around and like I said, that's not a necessary step, but that's just something I like to do. So what we're going to start out doing is taking the, let's start out with the fired brick. And with the fired brick, I'm going to go ahead and use my blending brush. And I'm just going to lay a little bit of a basic layer. Now with this, what I'm wanting to do is not cover my entire card. I kind of like the look of, of uh, the brick just kind of disappearing, I guess you might say, um, as it gets towards the edges. So I'm just going to put the bricks kind of in a random little shape here. I don't mind if it's lighter and darker because that's the nice thing about with brick is that um, it has multiple shades. 
So you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to go all over this really dark and, and make sure that I'm getting the red color even in, in the same. You don't have to do that because uh, you want to get the reality of what brick usually looks like. Okay. And there's some places that you can come out closer to the edge and some others that you can leave it a little bit more white. So let's see if you can kind of see how I've got that base layer on. So now I'm going to switch over to using my daubers because I want to be able to go a little bit more specific in certain places. So I'm going to move on to my crackling campfire. And I'm going to take my little small mini dauber and I'm just going to go and hit some places there. Not really doing a solid laying of this color. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a different shade of red in there. Again, this is to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. This is a house I grew up in had these colors, which is why I chose this. So um, it's a little bit reminiscent of the brick and the house that I grew up in. All right, so we've just hit a few little spots with that. And now we're going to go ahead and put just a few little dashes of the wild honey. Same process, just picking some random spots. To put some of that wild honey in. And then finally, we'll go ahead and do our vintage photo. And again, one of the reasons I really like using the daubers on this is because I can be a little bit more specific with that than I can when I'm using um, a blending brush. It allows me to kind of pick and choose and do smaller areas if I decide that's what I want to do. Alright, so you can kind of see there a little bit of what I've done. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape and the stencil. Set those aside and I can take this off of my magnet sheet now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, original fired, um, yeah, fired brick that we used, and I'm just going to brush over it. Not that little bit, there we go. Just brush over it a little bit. What this kind of does is blends the colors. It softens the brick a little bit as well. And then if we feel like we need a little bit more color in the background, you can always take something like your tea dye, which is such a nice light color, and kind of go over a little bit if you want the um, space in between your bricks to be a little bit darker than just the hickory smoke that we put on originally. 
And again, you can also do that a little bit hit and miss. You don't have to color over the entire thing. And so now we have got our brick wall. We're going to go ahead and set this aside so that we can start working on the window section. So right now we're going to go ahead and start working on our window piece. So we'll set this over here to the side and do our window piece. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to um, actually stencil the window onto a piece of scrap paper and then we're going to cut it out. Now like I said, you can use the Magimask um, if you have a larger card. It has all the little pieces in the package that allow you to um, make the window effect. I liked, I wanted to have a smaller one. I wanted to have a whole lot of bricks showing. So I actually created my own. And as I said, again, it's very hard to see, but as we um, create this, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. But basically, it's the same style as the Magimask. Um, it's just a little bit smaller. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to go ahead and anchor both my card and my mask down. So I'm going to go ahead anchor my card down to my work surface so that it doesn't wiggle while I'm working on the project. And then I'm going to take my mask and I'm hoping you can kind of see that there. I'll zoom in real quick so you can kind of see hopefully what that looks like for creating that piece. And I'm going to go ahead and um, actually tape the edges of that down as well so that it doesn't wiggle. It won't take us very long to stencil this part because we're basically only going to use um, one color and that's going to be our vintage photo. So we're going to take our vintage photo. I've, what I've got is I've got an open space here, but I've cut out windows. And I'm going to actually tape those windows down so that what I'm masking out is is where that where you would be looking into the the window of the house. So that all we're actually going to be coloring is going to be the outside frame and then the little cross frame in the middle. So I'm basically just laying these pieces. And this would be the same thing that you would do if you're using the Magimask. The Magimask also comes with little individual window pieces. Alright, so now I've got my window set up the way I want it to be. I'm going to straighten this one out just a little bit. Alright, so I've got my window pieces there. We're going to use the vintage photo. And you can either use a brush or you can use one of the small daubers. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a brush to start out with at least. Ink up my brush and then I'm just going to brush on that surface. You might be able to see it a little clearer now. How I've created the, the window panes with a mask and it's just basically the frame that we're stenciling in. And then I may go ahead and take my dauber and just to be able to create some darker areas and some lighter areas again with wood. You're going to have variations just like the brick um, in your shades. So I'm just going to allow that to kind of 
create varying shades in my window frames. All right, and then at this point, that is all you're going to need to do to create the beginning part of your window shade. So you can now take up your stencil. Remove the little window pieces. And there you have your window. Now what we want to do is um, go ahead and create our window look. And what we're going to do with that is take the tea dye to begin with. And we're just going to go into the window openings. And put a layer of that tea dye into the windows. So we've got just a little bit of a base down of the tea dye. Again, this is just so that we don't have to um, worry too much about it, the white, the stark brightness of, of white. Then we're going to take the black soot and just add a little bit of very, very light little strokes across that. That's just to kind of give us some dimensionality and some appearance of perhaps a little bit of reflection. giving it a little bit of depth. See if you can kind of see that a little bit, how we created just a little bit of depth in the appearance of some reflection there. So now what we want to do is go ahead and we want to stamp Mooch. So I'm going to grab my stamping platform. Stick my card down on the sticky grid. And then we're just going to place Mooch on the window there. Tell you what, I think I am going to go ahead and add just a tiny little bit more of the brown. The vintage photo right there before I do him and then we can always fill in if we need to with a little bit more so just a little bit of, of uh, brown there to give the appearance of him sitting on the ledge there all right so we've got mooch in place we're gonna stick him down to the lid there of our stamping platform and then ink up the stamp. One of the reasons I really like using a stamping platform, especially when you've got a solid stamp like this, is that you don't necessarily get a good clean impression the very first time that you stamp. And so it's nice to have used the platform so that you can go back in the exact same spot and fill in just a little bit if you need to. So apply enough pressure so that your stamp makes complete contact. And as you can see, I didn't quite get it all the way solid. So that is why I love the stamping platform. Sometimes people go, oh, stamping platforms are a little on the pricey side. But believe me, they are so well worth the effort and the price to use them. 
because before I got a stamping platform, I can't tell you how many pieces I ended up messing up and throwing in the garbage because I didn't care much for my image. All right, there's a tiny little bit of a spot left I didn't quite like. I'm going to take a bit of second more. I think I need to get a new stamp pad. That one's starting to run out of ink. And now we've got our mooch in the window. So we can go ahead and remove this. Set our plant platform aside. And now we're going to go ahead and just kind of um, give it a little more reality by putting in some black marks with our fine tip pen to kind of give it the look of wood. So I have a very fine tip pen that I really like to use. And with that, I am just going to basically, first I'm going to draw just a little bit of a line right here so that we can get the dimension of where the ledge is. And then I'm going to just start by putting in some little lines. And I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can make some knot holes in there. Just something to give it that effect that we've got a kind of a wooden window seal that he's sitting on. And then we're going to do the same thing on the part where he's sitting and throughout the frame. So that just gives it a little bit more of the realistic look of the wood. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and define just a little bit of our window, uh, window frame here so that it doesn't look quite so flat and gives it a little bit of dimension. Alright, and now the final thing that I want to do to make sure that we also have a little bit more dimension is add some shadowing under Mooch. So I'm going to take my black soot and create some shadowing and we might need to add just a little bit more ink to my dauber there. shadowing under him and that just makes it a little bit more realistic again. I may put a little darker shade up here. Now we are ready to go ahead and cut out our frame that we can then mount to our brick background. So we'll just take a pair of scissors and quickly cut out around the window frame. All right. 
right, now we're going to go ahead and mount it to our brick piece. So we'll bring our brick piece back. And we're just going to mount that right there in the center of our card. You can use a um, running tape. I like to use this, especially when I'm demonstrating, just because it's a little faster. Or you can always use a regular glue, a paper glue, craft glue. Whichever one you prefer to do. Alright. And then we will just... Get that centered. Into our card. Alright, so now let's just add a little bit of shadowing again to add some dimension. So I'm going to use my black soot. I'm going to go around just a little bit of the base here of the window seal. and go all the way around the frame just to give it a tiny little bit of depth And then, in order to get the crispness, because we cut this out, we don't have an edge around the window frame. So we'll just take our fine tip black pen again, and we're just going to run that along the edge. Again, this just basically gives it definition and makes it stand out just a little bit. go ahead and put just a little bit of shadowing around the edge. This um, helps to draw the eye to the center and it also just gives it a nice kind of soft little finished look. Okay. And now are we ready for putting our sentiment on? So I'll go ahead and bring back my stamping platform. We can line that up and make sure we get a nice impression for the sentiment.
And the one that I like to use, I wanted to use, was, um, this one's got a whole bunch of different things. I've had this thing forever. I don't even know where, all, where I got it, but it's got a lot of nice, simple phrases. And so I just like to use the little phrase, beautiful day. And so I'm just going to kind of put that down here in the right-hand corner. And I'll just get my Nocturne Ink up my stamp When I have very tiny letters on a sentiment stamp, I like to just barely tap it because if you squish too hard, you might get a little bit of a spreading of the stamp, and then there it makes the uh, letters not quite so clear. All right. And now we are ready to go ahead and put our card together. To put our card together, I am going to start out by mounting my art piece to the frame. So I'm just going to turn that over. And then so that I can see it, since my background is black here, I'm going to go ahead and get a white piece of paper so that I'll be able to see my edges a little bit more clearly. Sorry, my camera just went out of focus. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. All right. So I am going to mount my art piece onto the frame. And then we will mount the framed artwork onto our card base. And there we have our finished card. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial today. I hope you enjoy making the Cat in the Window card. And feel free to experiment with using different colors for your bricks. Remember to check out the DelBellasDesigns.com website for more tutorials on the Design Team page. Have a great day! Mm -hmm.